What's the word, y'all? Every single team is flawed. So, some of our teams are more flawed than others, as you know. But every single team has its flaws. And today, we're looking at one surprise problem from every NBA team from Bleach Report. Today's Thursday, which means that is the drop of the Kenny Beach and Podcast. On this episode, we talked about the Regal Bear, Draymond Green scuffle, and I kind of went in more th than what I anticipated. But I, I was really passionate about this. You should go check it out. The link is in the description. It's on Apple. It's on Spotify as well. These articles where it's not a singular person, but it's an entire group of people writing is always super cool because you get so many different perspectives. It's not just one mind. It's at least two. I don't know how many people are on the Bleach Report staff. At least two. Uh, at least. First one is uh, the Atlanta Hawks, Trey Young's icy shooting. This season, Trey Young is shooting 35% from the field, 28. Yeah, we'll round up for you, Trey. 28% from the field or from the three, which is just so much worse than what we're used to. And last year of his 42% and 33% from three, that was a down year. I don't know how much of a sample size we need to say that this 2021-2022 season was the outlier. But boy, could they use this guy versus this guy, you know? Then again, if every single other one of his years in his career is not close to that level of efficiency, then maybe this is the outlier. I don't know. They had that version of Trey Young with this roster. They be looking kind of dangerous. Now they're cool, but they not looking too crazy because he can't get his stuff together. Still a little stagnant. So the Boston Celtics are a team that we mentioned everybody has their flaws. They're a team with not a lot of them. But to be inclusive of all 30 teams that talked about, we have to find something. And it being a little stagnant, I think you can see that with the eye test also the percentages back it up with them having the 21st and uh assist percentage i still think that it's not going to matter too too much i don't believe they're going to finish 21st i think they're going to finish in the top half but yeah we just have to find a reason for them and that's it next we got the brooklyn nets disappointing defense which is interesting before the season started i questioned how they were going to score and scoring has not been the problem it's been the defense when mikhail bridges nicholas claxton when he's healthy uh ben simmons when he's healthy and even cam and and Dora finney smith these are all positive defensive players and they haven't been able to put it together defensively it's the offense that's been carrying them so far this year which is something i couldn't have expected too many fouls for the charlotte hornets i think you could have anticipated that <laughs> Young teams don't defend, and young teams commit fouls. So I, I don't think this is a problem that we didn't see coming, but it definitely is a problem. Something we didn't see coming is DeMar DeRozan missing his mid-range game. Um, yes, because that is 85% of DeMar DeRozan's value is that mid-range game. So if he's not performing at least to his averages, then he's not being an impactful NBA player, and that's what we're seeing right now. I don't want to talk about them. Um, next, Darius Garland shooting. DGDPG's been in and out of the lineup a ton. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. Even his assist to turnover ratio is way lower than what it's used to, to be in. Um, the Cavs just had a couple big wins on the road, though, so shout out to them. But I look at Darius Garland and his frame of work and saying that the jump shot is one thing I wouldn't be worried about too much. The Josh Green stagnancy is there for the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, um, I definitely thought this was going to be a very good year for him. I thought that the contract that he signed was like a bargain. Three years, $41 million. I'm like, oh, yeah, he going to outperform that. And so far, he hasn't. Luckily, the Dallas Mavericks offense is so very good that they haven't needed him. But obviously, his defensive impact is what they need the most. But they're able to win a bunch of games with just their offense. So I'll give him more time. Christian Brown not building off his rookie campaign. I think he's been smooth so far. But yeah, he hasn't been able to fill the role that you're missing in like Bruce Brown and so on and so forth. Luckily, it... Another one of those teams with not a lot of flaws. Even with Jamal Murray out, they're still taking care of business. So this is very minor in the grand scheme of the Denver Nuggets. Jaden Ivey's diminished playing time. Yeah. Monty Williams came in and said, hey, we want to try to build a defensive identity. So even though Killian Hayes is not as good of an offensive player as Jaden Ivey, not as good of an offensive scorer as Jaden Ivey, we're, we're willing to put Killian Hayes in the starting lineup because we want to get this culture of defense. And because of that, we've seen Jaden Ivey be not out of the rotation, but not a starter. And his minutes have dropped down dramatically. He's had a couple DMPs for reasons, not saying that his coach's decisions, but it's just something we didn't anticipate considering he was their pick from last year. Um, and you want their, their team to be Kay Cunningham, former first overall pick of Jaden Ivey, being the backcourt. But we don't know if that's going to be the case because of this. The dem demise of their best five-man unit. Where nobody in their starting lineup is living up to expectation right now. Klay Thompson is as, if, as inefficient as he's ever been in his career. Luckily, we saw him start off inefficient last year. Then he put it together later in the season. Wiggins, I don't know what the heck happened to the Wiggins that helped them win that championship. He is completely gone on the scoring, on the defense, on the rebounding, on the playmaking. He has regressed completely over the first couple games of the season. Draymond Green can't keep his hands to himself. So the unit that had been the best starting lineup in basketball last year is now not that. 
Um, they also have have been a victim of like really good shooting, like absurd and great shooting from opposing teams when this lineup is out. But it doesn't look perfect where nobody else in the star lineup has been able to drop a 20 point game when Steph is playing. Clay hasn't had a 20. Wiggins hasn't had a 20. Like, those are crazy things to say three weeks into four weeks into the season. I don't even know. It's so deep into the season. So, yes, a minus 17, which is crazy. Fred Van Vliet, two-point shooter. I think we could have saw this coming. Fred Van Vliet has never been a great two-point shooter. His value is not in that. His value is in him being able to play make, which he's doing a great deal right now. His value is him being a good defender, even though he's undersized. His value is that leadership. And you're seeing that a part of the Houston Rockets, where, like, even though he can't hit his shots efficiently or what we deem to be efficient, he's still a quality, quality player for what they're doing. Oh, but he's struggling even by his standards. Oh, the transition offense is just okay. They have the number one offense in basketball and it's not even a transition you look at what their team has put together you, you think that is their transition it's their half court oh that's killing it and if they ever get this part up i don't know how you guard this team because if they can also run with the best and their half court offense is the best it's like boy he's, they gonna put up a ton of points every single night the hapless start to the james harden era i don't know what that word means i understand i understand bringing out the thesaurus every once in a while so i respect that the unfortunate start of the James Harden era. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody, and even the people that were so down in this trade, definitely wouldn't anticipate the fact that they'd be winless after five games together. Nobody would expect that. So yeah, that is a problem. Again, I mentioned in my video a few days ago that they were doing some things that I think could be interesting once they start hitting their shots. I don't think this is the end-all be-all, but it has been uh, not, let's just say not great. Austin Reeves, yes, yes, Austin. Now, since he cut his hair, because... <laughs> That was something. Um, he's been better, but a lot of people expected him to hit a step. Um, he's already 25 years old, and I'm not saying that ends his progression or anything, but 25 is older as far as young prospects go. Um, he has not hit the next step that a lot of us were anticipating. He does not look like the same player that we saw in FIBA a couple months before that. And in due time, maybe he gets there, but it hasn't been that, that way. Like, they were really hell-bent or really interested to see uh, Austin Reeves as their third best player. And I mean, I guess you can argue he still has been the third best player, but he hasn't been to the level that they thought he could. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a rough time for the Grizzly fans out there. Man, it's been a rough time. And now John Moran is tweeting again after a little scuffle scuffle. Um, yeah, just, well, everything. Um, for sure. For sure. You couldn't get, yeah, nobody expected this. I expect this team to be decent when John Morant was gone. And now they got Steven Adams out, Brandon Clark out, Derrick Rose out. They missed Luke Kennard for some time, Santi Aldama for some time. It has not been pretty. I have not watched much of them because the games that I have watched were ugly. Um, Kyle Lowry's usage rate, interesting. Over 100 players are averaging at least 29 points per game this season. And only one of them, Mitchell Robinson, has a lower usage rate than Miami Heat starting point guy Kyle Lowry. I didn't, I've been watching a lot of Heat recently because they've been a, a fun watch. And Bam Adebayo and Hami Hakez have been tearing it up in their own respective rights. I never really recognized the fact that Kyle Lowry's usage was that low. Like, of course, it's hard not to recognize that the point guard is not playing the true point guard position. But I don't think he would have a low, as low of a usage rate than Mitchell Robinson, who's a lob guy. Yikes. Um. It's working. That's all you can ask for right now. Um, the ceiling is maybe a question, but it's working at the moment. Makes him kind of expendable in a potential trade with a player and or team. Ah, the inexplicable shabby. What is happening? That's what happens when you have 14 people working on one article. You start getting people that just bring out the words. That's not even a big word. It's just a difficult word. The inexplicably shabby defense. I don't think this was something that we didn't see coming. A lot of us recognize that when you sacrifice Drew Holiday to get in a Damian Lillard, the defense wasn't going to be good. Okay, I just checked it. It's 25th. Um, okay, you got a point. I didn't expect it was going to be the 25th worst or the 25th best. How you worth that? I knew it wasn't going to be good. I thought it might be league average, but 25th is just something. Now, early in the season, they were doing a lot of different coverages and stuff, and I think they're starting to realize, ah, we probably shouldn't do that. But yeah, uh, do you, can you win a championship with a 25th ranked defense? Who knows? I guess we'll find out. Carthony Towns, 
outside volume. Oh, they're just saying that they're nitpicking because the Wolves have been so good and they want to see Carthony Towns get more three-point shots up. Simple. Um, I like to see that the last what, three, four games or so, we're seeing a better version of Carthony Towns after a very slow start. Last night, they got destroyed, but Carthony Towns put out another good performance. So, um, so silver lining of all of this is that Cat looks better than what he did over the first two weeks of the season. The best player minutes. Where do we start off with the Pelicans, man? So, uh, Ingram and Zion on the floor together is a minus 6.7 net rating. Zion on and Ingram off is a minus 10. Ingram on, Zion off is a minus 12. And with both of them off, it is a it is a plus 3.3. And that's a good value compared to the other ones. I don't know what to think about that. Now, they have had so many injuries. This is just to name the players that have been injured right now. CJ, Larry, Jose, Trey, and Herb. So, like, they, they haven't got the full grasp of their team because they haven't been healthy just yet. Uh, but we've seen... Let, let me see how much time we've seen of these players together. Okay, small sample size this year. Because throughout their, their times of playing together, they have a net rating of 5.5. I was hoping this wasn't a good old-fashioned Chicago Bulls since it's that your team is bad when your best two players are on the court. It's just happening this year, a minus 6.7. I would assume that's going to go up specifically when Trey Murphy's back because and CJ, I guess, because they need playmaking and they also need other shooting. I'm not worried about the Jalen Brunson's floater is MIA. That, that feels very nitpicky. So he was a 49% shooter in that area. Now it's down to 34% whatever josh giddy up and down starts yeah this was something that i was really looking forward to with josh giddy playing the way he did in fiba and everything um i think the okc thunder were ex maybe expecting a jump from him and it hasn't really been that you have games like this one against the spurs where he was one of the best players on the court and we've had other games where he completely was a non-factor and didn't even close out games so you know when you have a player of his age of just 21 years old it's going to be a lot of ups and downs and i i think that most of us look at young players and think that progression is linear Oh, he played this many games last year. He should be better this year. That's not the way it works a lot of the times. And it's going to take some time to adjust to adding another guy in the rotation like Chad Holmgren. So I'm not too worried about Josh Giddey's up and down start. But it is something that maybe we haven't, we didn't anticipate because of how well he looked earlier and how well he looked at the end of last season. Um, the resilience of Jonathan Isaac. I watched John Isaac last night kind of put his imprint on a Chicago Bulls game um, because he was everywhere, you know. So to see him back on the court is cool because... Y'all know when he was drafted, he was one of my favorite prospects because of the defense. And then obviously over the last couple of years, he hasn't been able to play for multiple reasons. So to see him finally on a court and in a rotation is, is good. And I, I like that for him. They're saying that the 76ers are giving up too many shots at the rim, which is interesting because their defense is still one of the best in the league. Um, so that might be the one thing they got to figure out. Um, a lot of that is just like preventing your man from getting to the basket. You know, it's not a Joel Embiid issue as much as it is the perimeter players not staying in front of their guys and preventing, you know, backdoor cuts and so on and so forth. It's something I didn't, I guess, recognize from all the games I've watched of the 76ers because I would deem them to be a really good defense. And I guess I didn't recognize that they were giving up so many layups and stuff. Um, the big three availability, a lack thereof. The pump fake that we got last night, I was so excited for Timberwolves versus Suns and then to see that Brad was going to be out. It was cool to see Book come out and show out, but to see Brad was going to be out again, I'm like, bro, no way. So eventually we should be seeing these boys play. And then we can find, I haven't talked about the Phoenix Suns because I haven't seen their team yet. We haven't seen their team yet. So Brad, get well soon, my boy. My boy. Uh, DeAndre Aiden's offensive usage. Yeah, I thought that this, I wanted to draft DeAndre Aiden in fantasy this year. Thank God I didn't because he's not getting the amount of touches as he was last year. I'm not even close to the amount. And I can now, I kind of realize that, yeah, you're playing with Chris Paul and Devin Booker, two really plus playmakers. You're going to get more touches. And now he's playing with some some players that can't get in the ball, like Malcolm Brogdon and stuff. But for the most part, when you have young guards, they don't really facilitate as well as some of the old, Chris Paul is one of the oldest men in the league. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, his offensive usage has gone down. I think he's looked good over the last couple of weeks individually. But we're not seeing him get as many touches as he did in uh, Phoenix because it's hard to get the ball when you're a, uh, a center, you know, unless you are the center. You feel me? Harrison Barnes' regression. Um, they also have the struggling second year player in Keegan Murray who can't find his jump shot at the moment. Um, I guess that's not a problem you worry about because yeah, second year player it happens all the time. Through the first nine, oh man, nine games last season, he averaged under 10 points while knocking out 16% of his triples. Ugh. Since he dropped 33 on open at night, he's downing just 31.3% of his triples while getting rocked on defense and rebounding at a clip that is even low for him. Interesting. I guess I didn't recognize the, the slow start of Harrison Barnes. 
and it makes it as a guy that is looking to trade Zach Levine. It makes the the Kings fans, the, the few Kings fans that hit me up, it makes sense. It makes a little bit more sense now. The cost of experimentation. I ain't got nothing to say about the Jeremy Sohan experiment at point. But I ain't got nothing to say. I ain't got nothing to say. I don't like it. How, well, that's all I'll say. <laughs> so the run problem that they didn't see coming is that everybody else saw a company coming that they this team was going to struggle. Um, there's... There's a lot of things to be fixed there in Toronto. They are as up and down as any team in the association where some games I watch, I'm like, man, they look pretty good. And then like the other night with no Giannis, they lose by 30 points to, to Damian Lillard and, and Malik Beasley. So it's like, whoa, you know, there, there's so much gray area with this team where they look really good one night and then really awful the next. Uh, and a lot of us believe that this could be a possibility. I guess Messiah and them did it. And we got a couple more. The front line uh, weirdness, front line combination weirdness. I think this was predictable. When you have Walker Kessler, Lowry Marketing, Kelly Olenek, and then you add in John Collins, uh, objectively, is this going to be a tougher fit when all of this? Even though we've seen Lowry Marketing play a good amount of three over the course of his career, it's just I think he projects more as a, as a four. And now he's playing a lot more. All three of their bigs together, they are a minus 20. When there's no Collins, they're a minus nine. And when there's no Marketing, they're a minus six. And when it is a no Kessler, they are plus 4.1. Ooh. The small ball John Collins Lowry marketing lineups are looking kind of good. It's actually their most used combination of two players. So just something to take a look out uh, on for the next, um, I guess, year or so. Jordan Poole's lack of counting stats. That's a good way to put it. I don't think many of us went into this thinking that Jordan Poole was going to average 25 on great efficiency, but a lot of us thought he would at least average 20. Me and Clue, I thought he was easily a shoe win for 20 points per game. He ain't really close to that right now. 16.3 is the actual number, and he's playing less minutes now than he played over the last two years. Part of that is that the team is not normally in game, so he don't play a lot in fourth quarters, but still, um, he hasn't been able to score officially. Of course, you see the viral moments of him doing crazy stuff here and there. He has a one-to-one -one assist to turnover ratio as one of the prime ball handlers on his team. There's a lot of things looking bad about the Jordan Poole thing. And there's a rumor that they traded for him to up his trade stock. Uh, they're doing a poor job of that through the first 11 games. What is a problem of your favorite team you didn't see coming? Because I think a lot of us were optimistic about our favorite team. Not saying that everybody thought they was going to win a championship, but that, that this player was going to hit a jump, or this player was going to do this, this team is going to do this. All of that happened. So let me know in the comment section. Of course, as always, I'll be there. Check out the Kenny Beach and Podcast. Link is in the description.